Sophie Hardy and the Internet Implant by Emma Dale. Narrated by Leona Hall. Chapter 27. One more problem to solve. As the morning dragged on, Sophie, Yasmin and Clara made plans to try and zone out at break time. They would all find a secluded part of the school field and lie down on the grass, pretending to be looking at the sky. It would be unlikely anyone would disturb them. However, ten minutes before break time, the rain started falling like the weather itself wanted to stop them. Mrs Tabard, who was enjoying the opportunity to cover the class so much and was teaching column edition in a way so over the top that she could have been nominated for an acting award, almost sensed the rain coming and did that thing that lunchtime workers always do. As the first drop hit the window, wet break, she shouted in a tone that implied she enjoyed breaking the news to the class. Tuts and groans were let out by every child in the room, whereas Mrs Tabard seemed to revel in the idea of having the class for even longer, allowing her to educate the children even more than she had done. This meant that Sophie, Yasmin and Clara had to think again. Dinner time looked out of the question as the rain was still falling and there was no way they'd be able to find a quiet place. Next lesson passed, but the rain didn't. Then... So did dinner time, but still the rain fell. At random points throughout the afternoon, more and more red dots appeared in their eyes. When Mrs Tabard wasn't looking, the girls would quickly zone out, read what they said, then come back into the classroom. Every single one of the messages was from Miss Sissons, who desperately needed them back at Shadow. While Mrs Tabard spent about five minutes talking to one of the boys at the front of the room, Clara really quickly typed, Why can't you come and get us? You're only in Mr Houghton's office. Miss Sissons didn't reply. With five minutes left of the day, Mrs Tabard finally told everyone to start packing away. The girls knew that they were about to be given the freedom that they needed. For a whole day, the three of them would have given nothing more than to be able to zone out to go and see what the huge situation was that was developing at Shadow. Now they could almost taste their freedom. The three had agreed that going back to Mr Houghton's office would be crying out for more trouble, so they agreed that, because Yasmin's house was the largest and the closest, they would go to hers and hide out in her bedroom. As soon as everyone had tidied up and Mrs Tabard had dismissed them, the girls grabbed their bags and made a run for the exit. Being able to walk home on their own meant that they didn't have to contend with Clara's dad's or Sophie's parents asking unwanted questions. They ran all the way to Yasmin's house. Her mum, Zoe, was in the kitchen and dad was on a call in the other room when they burst in. Mum, can you let Sophie and Clara's parents know that they're here, please? Yasmin asked as the three ran upstairs. Clara? Hasn't she left? Zoe asked, surprised. No, she's here with us, Yasmin shouted as the three rounded the top of the stairs and ran for Yasmin's room. Do you want a drink, the three of you? Zoe shouted, now at the bottom of the stairs. No thanks, Yasmin bellowed back and shut her bedroom door. They'll be teenagers soon, Zoe said to herself as she walked back to the kitchen, smiling and shaking her head. The three girls got comfy and zoned out. What they saw when they awoke gave them an idea as to why Miss Sissons had been panicking. They arrived in the reception area with the painting, but whereas before everything had been white and clean and new, now there were flashing red lights, sirens wailing and large signs on the walls flashing warning in huge red letters. Clara ran down the white corridor, as they had done when they first brought Clara back to be checked out. Sophie and Yasmin followed, not at all sure where they were running to. About 300 metres down the corridor, Clara stopped and put her hand over the wall on the right. The wall parted and revealed yet another hidden room. Clara ran straight in and, once again, Sophie and Yasmin walked in with a slight fear of the unknown. Still the lights flashed and the sirens wailed. As Sophie walked in, she saw that this room wasn't shiny and new like the others she'd seen. This was older. It had a staircase through the middle with banisters on either side. At the top of the stairs was a large balcony which had screen after screen of data and information flashing on it. Clara had run all the way to the top where Miss Sissons was stood, looking extremely rigid. Sophie and Yasmin walked up behind her, taking in as much as they could. About halfway up the stairs was another level, which contained smaller screens that seemed to have cameras that were following certain people around in cities. Sophie watched as closely as she could, but couldn't make any of them out, but it did seem like the people had no idea that they were on the screen. Finally, arriving at the top, Sophie and Yasmin joined in the conversation with the other two. If I let go of this, then they all get out. Miss Sissons was looking extremely flustered. What's happening? Sophie asked. Clara turned to the pair of them. Someone has broken into Zapvor. What exactly is Zapvor? Sophie asked. This was about the third time she'd heard it mentioned, but still wasn't much the wiser as to what it was. She did recall her dad saying something about a prison called Sadcor, though. Well, you know how we protect Earth from the worst of the worst, Miss Sissons began, still clinging on to the buttons and levers for dear life. We need somewhere to house the creatures that we catch. That's what Zapvor's for. 
A prison, then? Sophie asked, knowing full well she was already right, having remembered that Clara had said this to her earlier. Yes, and someone has broken into it. Miss Sisson turned to say, not moving a finger. Why does someone want to break into your prison? Sophie asked, trying to gain as much information as she could. Probably to break someone out, thought Yasmin, shrugging her shoulders. Yes, Yas, Miss Sissons replied. Dale Nathan must have got in there somehow and now plans to unleash every mythical we've ever caught, meaning Mr King has no choice but to release the agents on Nathan's terms. But why is it taking them all day? Your first message came through this morning. Is he still trying? Sophie asked. Miss Sissons tried to mop her brow on her shirt but couldn't quite reach. The first signs of a break-in came this morning. Alarms were triggered and the doors were opened. I put the whole thing into emergency shutdown which stopped him for a few minutes but as he used to work here and knows his way around it didn't take long for Nathan to hack in again. More doors opened and we got closer to a full breakout. So what's stopping them now? Yasmin asked. They still have one door to open, the main front door. If that were to open, then it would let out every creature we've ever caught. The world would be under threat from countless beings and demons. Mr Nathan has been fighting me from inside the control room in the prison, trying to open it. However, as long as this button is pressed, that door stays shut. He hasn't tried for a while. I think he's waiting for me to tire, but as soon as I let go, he will be hacking away again. We have to stop him before he can let everyone out. With no agents and the worst of evil creatures roaming the earth, it could spell disaster. Isn't the force field around Earth due to fail soon, meaning the world will be under threat anyway? Sophie asked. Yes, replied Miss Sissons, but the way that Nathan is sabotaging the system like this would deactivate that force field early. The world would be opened up, not just to creatures from Zatvor, but every mythical creature the world, or even the universe, has to offer. All that would be in their way would be you three. Clara, Sophie and Yasmin looked at each other. Are you ready for your first proper mission? Clara asked with a twinkle in her eye. Ready to stop Dale Nathan once and for all? Sophie and Yasmin also couldn't help but smile. They were going to go and save the world. Miss Sisson said authoritatively, Clara, give them a link. Clara zoned out to type the link and then reappeared as it came through. Miss Sissons was clearly revelling in her new role as leader. There should be some time dilators kept in the room he's in. You need to get one and stick it to the side of his head, she then said. Will time move slower or faster for him, Sophie asked. Much slower. One minute for us will be about one nanosecond for him, Miss Sissons replied. Sophie nodded and understood what needed to be done. Clara smiled at the opportunity of revenge and Yasmin simply said, let's go get him. The three of them all zoned out of shadow and, still wearing their school uniforms as avatars, arrived at Zapfor. The Sophie Hardy Saga was written and produced by Emma Dale and narrated and produced by Leona Hall. If you enjoyed it and would like to continue to follow the adventures of Sophie and her friends in coming episodes, then please subscribe through one of the many podcast providers out there. The links for each of these can be found on our website. If you require more information, visit our many social media channels or if you would like to purchase a hard copy of the book, then be sure to check out www.sophiehardysaga.com. Thank you for listening and we hope you enjoy. Thank you.